But my life is good. Really good. I get to wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and make some soup. It's the best. Love it. I get to lay in a bed by myself all of my life. You're playing music too loud, right to jail, right away. You're driving too fast, jail. Slow, jail. You're charging too high prices for uh, sweaters, glasses. You ride to jail. Okay, I don't know. Uh, it, whatever it is, it's not right on a teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. No, there it is. We are going to do Sting, yeah. Okay, but... Okay. This, now, I can't read it. There's no, there's no words on it. Okay. Honey? Sure. There's yeah. no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? It's, it's Sting is going to do, it's a video, Sting video. Okay. What is, for credits. I don't know what that means, to play us out. What does that mean? To end the show? Yeah, yeah. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it. Okay. In five, four, three. Three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. Uh, I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. Do it! Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it! We obviously didn't communicate clearly. We had to discuss your surrender, not mine. Tú eres tan romántico como la están no con una vipa. Me pregunta si te quiero. Yo te digo que no estoy lista y no quiero comenzar. No hay nada que empezar. Yo te dejaré atrás. Ni te gano más y más. No estás en mi nivel y tú no eres obligación. No estás motivada y tú aburre mi corazón. Eres un idiota. What is up, everybody? It is your boy, Lou Martinez, a.k.a. Big Chief Burrito, live with you on a Wednesday. Mi Gente Show, live and direct from Chula Vista, California. Mi Gente Show, a proud sponsor of the San Diego Latino Film Festival. And we are very honored today to be doing more work for the San Diego Latino Film Festival as a media sponsor um, to promote one of the upcoming events this weekend. Personal news real quick before we get started. No dog cam today because our boy also had a little mishap. He hurt one of his legs. So if you hear him in the background complaining, 
he's not being tortured. He's just adjusting to his pain medication. So hopefully we'll, he'll be okay for the rest of the day. Uh, make sure that if you are planning to attend the San Diego Latino Film Festival, you use code MIGENTE SHOW, <clears throat> MIGENTE SHOW at checkout, and you can get 15% off any ticket or event that includes the Saturday night closing night party with Sonora Dinamita. And the event we're going to talk today about is Arte Latino and their upcoming Arte Latino Comic and Lucha Art Fest. That's a handful. But Andy and Melody from Arte Latino are here. Um, we're going to bring them on for a second, and then we're going to bring on our special guest in a minute or two. But Andy, Melo, how are you guys doing? Hey. Great. Also, I never get tired of that Bill O'Reilly flipping out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. It's a classic. I just it, no, we'll we'll do it live because <laughs> that's the show policy. We we rec- we do it live, you know. We write it and we'll do it live. Um, and I saw Mello reacting to me adding Wednesday to the intro. Yes, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, I sorry, didn't right, see before the the Nacho Libre part at the very beginning. I love it. Yeah, it's hilarious. I try to add a little something <laughs> every week to make it just as big of as Madre as possible. <laughs> and um, well, you and, succeeded. And, and I succeeded. So, uh, just before we bring in our guest, uh, just can you give me a little update of how how's Arte Latino going for you guys so far? Very good. Great, really great. We're really excited to have so many um, artists participate this year, and um, we have the artists in market on the weekends. We have um, a group show um, with art here at the hub, and. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot of people taking pictures and tagging us, and it's it's pretty great. I saw that the uh, Bad Bunny uh, picture got sold, right? And yes, Esmeralda Robles. She did um, sell her, her Bad Bunny, and she was working on a, a very large piece as well, also Bad Bunny. So um, I'm pretty sure she's going to sell that one too soon. All right. And then, Andy, what's what's been your biggest takeaway so far? I mean, we're, not, we're halfway there. We're... we're we're, it's, we're, we've reached the point of no return. It's easier to move forward than to turn around. That's very true. Yeah, we're really, um, we've got a lot of uh, awesome artists this year. Um, people are just coming in and really digging the fact that we have art when you walk into the a hub space. You know, it makes a big difference when you leave and you've heard live music, seen some live art, seen some the sick artists. Um, and watch some films. You know, people like the experience. It's an overall experience. So people are digging it. All right. And I got the appropriate hat for the occasion, right? We got the, there the, you go. the, the lucha hat for today. There so, you go. <laughs> so we get together. And then I got the, you know, Chespirito, Chapulín, and Chich and Chong <laughs> representing for La Cultura, right? All right. All right. Uh, well, without further ado, man, um, this is a person that I've been uh, following on Twitter for a long time, and I've been following their career forever. A world-renowned cartoonist, political satirist, um, and artist, uh, Lalo Alcaraz. No. Hey, what's up? Do it live! <laughs> <laughs> I saw Lalo vibing a little bit. He was trying to draw, but he kept looking up like, what the hell is what the hell's going on here? <laughs> that is the world's longest intro. Um, <laughs> But uh, it was worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Uh, Lalo, can, let's start off. Um, you know, um, when did you become aware? Or when did you and Andy connect about this? And and um, what were your feelings about being involved in this sort of comic lucha hybrid art event? Hey, I just uh, I just show up. All right, the, you know, and <laughs> I do whatever Andy tells wherever Andy tells me to go. No, um, he he contacted me about being part of the the festival, and then. Uh, all of a sudden, it was not just me sitting in the in in, in the lobby, uh, which I'd done before, and which was was fun. I met a lot of cool artists uh, years ago. I don't even know when I did that last time for the film festival, but this time, and he's like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna." And it came in stages, like, "Hey, will you come and 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 booth uh, and vend?" Uh, yeah, sure, uh, sounds good. He said, uh, then the next one was, uh, uh, hey, do you mind if we make you a, like a special featured artist? I'm like, I never mind that, of course, you know, <laughs> let's do that. And then he says, can we do a thing around you that's like the Lucha and Comics day? I'm like, go for it, you know, I'm just, so I just sat there and all these things happened around me, which is a metaphor for my life, always. 
Uh, so Andy knows where all the bodies are buried is what I'm getting from this. So, <laughs> any- My next question was going to be, can we just call this the Lalo Alcarez Film Festival? Hey. hey. <laughs> I, I, I want the, the contract for the T-shirts. There you go. There you go. Um, and, and, and Lalo, I mean, you, you have some history, I mean, not only from Comic-Con, but you spent some time in San Diego as well, right? Uh, yeah, the, uh, being born and growing up there. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. a little bit of time. So, yeah, does the going to college? <laughs> does the festival? I mean, were you always aware of it, or like, did you participate in it, or did you attend like growing up? Or were you kind of aware that it was happening while you were here? Uh, I I don't think the festival is fifty nine years old, like I almost am. So no, uh, but I did go the, a couple times, uh, and uh, yeah, it's I'm I'm glad that they have you know that there's such a good festival there in San Diego. And uh, let me just tell you, Cisco has improved greatly since I left. They wait, it's always happened. They wait till I leave and then they fix things <laughs> up and make them better. So I'm Aren't not you coming back. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll come back for um, actually, yeah, I will be there on, on Saturday. Uh, and also, and I'll be back uh, on Wednesday, uh, the 22nd of March. Uh, to uh, for the opening and panel discussion at San Diego State uh, for my uh, art show there, doing a pop-up art show called uh, Please Forward My Hate Mail. And uh, I was, uh, you know, and it's called that because that was my nickname at the Daily Aztec newspaper uh, at San Diego State when I was the editorial cartoonist there in the, when I was in college there in the late 80s and, uh, or, or mid 80s. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to be showing some of my, uh, what happened? Are the, um, are the, is the DEA breaking into your house? You should look there's, a raid at the, there's a raid at the mall. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, that was, uh, like I said, it was my nickname at the uh, paper. I'm going to be uh, showing some of the cartoons from back in the day and a lot of my new stuff. It's kind of an overall show uh, of my editorial cartoons and a couple of comics from La Cucaracha, my daily comic strip that runs in the paper there and syndicated nationally. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's San Diego. It's everything's coming up San Diego. Yeah. Nice, nice. Absolutely, man. And it is an honor for us to have you on the Hente show. And it's also an honor to have you uh, part of the festival this year. Um, Andy, can you talk a little bit about, you know, kind of um, what the event will be centered as you kept growing and growing around Lalo, what, uh, what, what, what your goal is uh, to, what the space that you and Melody are trying to create? Well, the, the idea originally was once we got Lalo in and that's locked in, he can't get out that we would uh, build around him. So we wanted to do like a mini, almost like a mini Comic-Con type thing. Um, and so we got a couple people who are, um, who go to Comic-Con and they're comic book artists and we got some Lucha art. We just thought it would be a really great time and a place to start a whole new feature for the festival. And hopefully it'll be every year and hopefully Lalo will keep coming back. And uh, yeah, it sounds like, sounds like the next step Lalo is Andy getting you to, to commit to, to the yearly. Come back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess my March is a book for months. March is our book for now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> awesome. All right. Rosa Parra. Hey, Rosa, thanks for stopping by. She says this is incredible. Saludos a to Rosa Parra from Latinx Lens. Follow her on Twitter. Thanks for stopping by, Rosa. We're sorry we couldn't come down to the festival, but maybe you can come down for Saturday. Hey, you never know. Um, and, uh, you know, Melo, let, tell me a little bit, you know, how you feel about the, the event coming up. What, what was your role in it? What other artists can we expect to see? It's exciting. Um, we have about... 13 artists um, joining us and participating um, and from from all over. Actually, we have some from Mexico City that came just for this. I mean, not just for this event, but for the for the festival itself. Um, we have, can I drop some names or? Yeah, do it, this is your part. So we have Joaquin uh, Junco, we have Ruben Rosas, uh, Paco Pablos will be there. Uh, Mike Kim Art, Chicana Roots, Seven Octobers, Jorge Piña, Kicks Cakes, Lisa Cabrera, Elizabeth Vasquez, uh, Gerardo Rodriguez. We have Tika Artesanal is going to be there, and uh, Joe Hernandez. So a lot of them are, uh, well, all of them are Latinos. 
Um, a lot of them are artists, so they will have their um, art display there and um, vending as well. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a great, great event. Also, Melody de los Cobos is going to be uh, an artist. Chicana event. Lily painting live? No. <laughs> going to be there, believe it or not. I the will Chicana be there, Lily. yes. <laughs> No problem. All, right. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by and joining us. Make sure that you're hitting the like on that stream. When you see it, scroll by. Stop by. Leave us a comment. Make sure that you're following at Chicana Lili, myself, at Big Chief Burrito, as well as at Mi Gente Show, wherever. And you can always find Mi Gente Show anywhere you get your podcasts. News and culture, reacting to news and culture from a Latino perspective. We're like every other podcast that reacts to news and culture, except it's hosted by two, Lat <laughs> except it's hosted by two Latinos, so... Come give us a follow. And, it's live. and it's live. We record it live <laughs> and then we post it to all the podcast networks the next day. So you'll be able to hear this audio. Hey, can uh, I tell you something? Um, I, I had this discussion one time with a young woman, and, she, and I was trying to explain that I do a radio show called The Pocho Hour of Power, which I've been doing in April. It's going to be 20 years that we've been doing this radio wow. show. Uh, wow. KPFK in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, we've interviewed uh, all, you know lots of big stars, and activists, and and uh, you know every every funk artist that you listen to when you were fifteen, or at least when I was fifteen, uh, we interviewed uh, you know people from all those bands from Earth, Wind, and Fire, from Roger, uh, Zap, I mean, you name it, War, Power, Tower, uh, Tower of Power. Anyway, I tried to explain this uh, whole thing I'm doing, and and uh, this young woman was like, "Yeah, but um, but is it a podcast?" I'm like, "Well, no, it's a radio show with an antenna, and it goes on uh, airwaves." Yeah, but is it a podcast? <laughs> I'm like, "You can listen to it streaming live on our kpfk.org." Yeah, but like, I mean, live. I'm like, bro, <laughs> you know, it's also archived on the radio station. Yeah, but, you know, do I have to go look for it? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it was like two generations not communicating here. Like, uh, yes, it's archived. You can have it sent to you. And, you know, God, sorry. I'm, sorry I made anybody lift a finger to listen to my radio show. But anyway, watch your hour of power. Fridays at 3 o'clock. <laughs> Ultra Hour Power. Uh, yeah, it's, you tune in at a specific time on a specific channel and you listen. <laughs> and they do crazy, it live. Right? Yeah, it's a crazy <laughs> world. Uh, all right, guys, we're live here with Melody, uh, Andy, and Lalo talking about these upcoming Saturday um, the special event, the Arte Latino Comic and Lucha Art Fest. There's going to be tons of artists. There's going to be tons of merch, I'm assuming. There's going to be uh, photo opportunities, live painters. Um, what's the lucha aspect, Andy? Well, the lucha aspect, um, I don't know how we just threw that in there. <laughs> we just thought it would be cool. <laughs> you get to wrestle your favorite artist. And <laughs> if, you, if you beat Lalo and Melo, then you can go against Paco, who's like seven foot four. <laughs> As Lalo fades into the background of his that awesome... Was Oh, there he goes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's a cool effect how he does that. I'll, I will be wearing my uh, special uh, COVID lucha mask that I just got. Uh, can you see this? Oh, yeah. Get down. Oh, wow. Go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, this is gift. Can you hear me at all? Because I sound really yeah, yeah, helpful. <laughs> and then my glasses are fogging up too, but. Anyway, it uh, was a gift from a friend up north in Sacramento who uh, has these masks, and uh, they're called uh, luchamask.com. Yeah, luchamask.com. Wow. They're kind of cool. Half my headphones fell out, so let me fade out. There we go. All right, we'll give you a second there to, re to regroup, regroup. All right, um, and let's uh, let's jump into uh, – I want to ask you a couple of questions just about you know how your how your comics obviously you start you have the pocha hour you you start doing your cartoon la cucaracha that gets you some recognition did you do you feel that sure. um and then i mean what, when i started to become more aware of just your daily daily stuff was over the last sort of um four or five years kind of when 
all your political cartoons that started to get like retweeted and stuff like that. Um, was that a, um, were you always that political or did, 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 did being sort of having the last administration politically sort of activate a different part that sort of brought you to another level of that or? Yeah, you know, uh, I was uh, always that political because I grew up, I grew up in Lemon Grove uh, and uh, I, uh, you know, I, I saw how my, my, my parent, my, my Mexican immigrant parents, my mom's from Sinaloa, my dad lived in Tijuana for 10 years and my dad's from Zacatecas and I, I just kind of had a sense of injustice very early on as a kid. And I remember, uh, you know, my the first time I ever wrote, or uh, I wrote a, I think I wrote a letter to, like, I want to say it was Cha Channel Ten, which I think I'm going to be on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I must have been like 15 years old or something, and I saw a news report that uh, about lightning hitting a, a lunch truck out in some uh, agricultural fields up in, in North County. And uh, a, 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 a group of the farm workers, the campesinos there that were picking the crop got hit by the lightning and they all had to go to the hospital. And one was like super critical. And they do this report. And then at the end of the report, they go, it is not known whether any of the victims were illegal immigrants. I was like, what does that have to do with anything other than Diego being racist and, and having to point out someone's immigration status? And, and that was my first letter uh, I wrote to uh, uh, anybody, any sort of news, anything. And they actually wrote me back. And I'm like, yeah, hey, you're right. That didn't have anything to do with anything in the news story. And thanks for pointing that out. I was like, huh, trip out, you know. But uh, I'd always been like that. Uh, and... Uh, uh, I, I just started using comics as a way to uh, kind of express those thoughts and feelings, and and see how you know other if I, if if it could change anything, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And and you you had some biting commentary uh, all these years. Then is there one particular uh, sort of um, one that went viral more than others, or that that got you some 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 major feedback that you can point to or do they all sort of blend together day to day for you uh, i mean i've had uh, you know big big pieces that um you know have been very influential or um and i feel like i won uh uh at a slot at a slot machine <laughs> I know, right? in so vegas my, notifi my notifications here are going crazy. I apologize <laughs> how much did watching. i win uh, but uh, no, I, I feel like, uh, yeah, there's there's a piece um, that I actually was going to go grab off the wall, but now nah, I forget. Uh, Migra Mouse was a piece that I did uh, during the uh, Prop 187 era, and we were all battling uh, against uh, Pete, Pete the Wilson and, uh, you know, uh, hometown boy, Pete the Wilson. Have they taken that statue down yet? Because I want to be there uh, yeah, when they do. No, no. Good question. We got to find that out. <laughs> Let's Good go question. take it down <laughs> after after the after party. Uh, yeah, you know where we'll be at one in the morning um, <laughs> on Saturday. But uh, you know that was a piece that got you know it was before the internet. It was in the the early nineties. There you go. Thank you. And uh, it was something that people would reproduce on their own. They would redraw it and hold it up as a banner and. You know, because we didn't really have, uh, you know, email or uh, it wasn't that common, uh, social media. Um, and, uh, and and people just reproduce it on their own and, and hold it as a banner in during the marches. And I thought that was super cool. Uh, and uh, and that, that's one piece. Another piece I did was actually another mouse, Muerto Mouse, uh, which uh, I did when uh, the uh, Disney company, uh, had tried to trademark the term Dia de los Muertos, uh, and so I did that cartoon, and that that got a lot of play. And I'll take a little bit of credit for uh, making them retract uh, that that trademark application. Uh, and then eventually, a year later, hiring me to work on the movie Coco as a cultural consultant, uh, 
and then uh, winning uh, the Oscar for that. But uh, yeah, so uh, there's you know there's some standouts. I got a couple of uh, greatest hits. I like how he casually threw in the Oscar win at the end. You know? Oh yeah, sorry. I, just, <laughs> and, a, and then of course the Oscar. Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I was and I I was looking at that um, that uh, that this this piece the, the that he just did the um, the Latino presence at the Oscars one, which is brilliant. Obviously, yeah, obviously yeah, very you. brilliant. Yeah. Um, what is it? What uh, what is the what what is the process from from concept to 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 publishing for you these days? Is it like um, do you like wake up, grab your coffee, read the news, get you know check some sites or something like that, and then or do you like wake up with the idea in your mind or? It depends. I mean, sometimes the thing will just pop in there and uh, will be there overnight, uh, ready to be uh, <laughs> uh, put on paper or eat or put on a. You know my uh, my iPad, you know, and uh, the um, I do. I just I'm always. I mean, I'm looking up right now at my TV here in my new studio, uh, and uh, my new TV with CNN on it, going twenty four seven or MSNBC or local news or something. Uh, and uh, I just I just sit and soak up the news all day long uh newspapers or or tv or the internet and then uh a, an idea will pop into my head uh sometimes like you know today what today's wednesday so got to have a cartoon in by tomorrow for editorial and i i've got to uh you know last week i did like three dilbert cartoons because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you know the creator of uh of dilbert scott adams whose strip was right next to mine in the la times is a big uh racist idiot so um that was the whole news for cartoonists last week i didn't do anything else about anything uh and then um you know i just see what's in the news cycle or i have an idea about something or or sometimes people will contact me and say could you think about doing something about such and such which is weird because sometimes i've i've like have had i tell people now like you know i don't really take orders for for cartoons, you know, this is this is in uh, Burger King, uh, and uh, um, and and people sometimes will ask me like, you know, hey, I just got fired from my job. Will you do a cartoon about it? And I'll be like, sorry, bro, that didn't get, that didn't hit the national news, you know. So I, and people will end up hating me, and uh, that that actually happened with a Chicana artist, a performer in, in L.A. that got fired from a job and demanded that I do a cartoon about it. I was like, yeah, sorry, no, I can't. I'm doing something else. And she ended up like not ever talking to me again. You know, it's like I I, I didn't sign up for that. You know, I'm not I'm not your uh I'm not your mayor. I'm not your city councilman. I'm just a dumb guy with a pen. I get that a lot of people just say, hey, have you ever thought of making a movie about my life? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely not. Oh, what are these notifications? Uh, uh, you say no, George Santos. No, George Santos, go away. Um, <laughs> so basically, it just you know depends. Obviously, and then I, I did I did enjoy a lot of your um, a lot of your COVID stuff, like you know, kind of like your activism there. Can you speak a little bit about that? Sure. I uh, you know about uh, yeah when when COVID happened uh, a little bit after I was approached by. A, uh, a an academic guy, uh, um, Gilbert Lopez, out of Dr. Gilbert Lopez, out of Arizona State, and he said, "Hey, I have a thing called COVID Latino. Would you be interested in partnering up and doing stuff? I'll, you know, I can get uh, uh, at least get traction for this stuff." And uh, uh, um, we want we there many agencies, or whatever they were they were doing outreach to Latinos. Uh, using Latino artists, but a lot of the art was kind of like, normally, I mean, it's better than the normal stuff, which is like clip art, you know, like state agencies will use the kind of blandest, most vanilla, whack clip art that you can Google on Google images and, and then make an ad with for for everybody. Or or when they try to do one for Latinos, they'll, they'll use like, you know, a Loteria card or a Luchador and then be like, okay, we did our job, you know, 
But this COVID Latino really wanted to focus the work towards um, the messaging on COVID, on protection, just the basic stuff that, you know, we all went through, uh, safety stuff, to farm workers in the Central Valley. This academic guy, uh, Dr. Lopez, was from the Central Valley. And he said, we want to focus this on, uh, and, oh, there's a piece that uh, my uh, assistant, uh, the great Junco, uh, Joaquin Junco, uh, did. Uh, and this, this is one of the best ones. I hate to say, man, he can draw so well. Uh, and uh, it's a really nice uh, piece uh, that I art directed, of course. Uh, but uh, we did a series like about, I don't know, 15 pieces for the. Then one day he says, hey, these are going great. Uh, we're doing them English, Spanish. Uh, he goes, hey, I want to do some animation. What do you think about that? And I said, hell yeah, listen. And that's how I got like my first credits directing animation. I got a bunch of pieces. And then from, we did one uh, uh, that was, um, he, he said, want to do a, a kind of a crazy one just, you know, for, for the barrio. I said, all right, let's do Super Vaccine Vato. And because uh, I had a character called Super Vato from La Cucaracha, and I said, let's, let's do that. And so we did a crazy one where he's a, you know, he's like a veterano superhero. He's a little bit out of it. He has superpowers, but, you know, he uses them to, like, you know, get a 40 from across town or something, you know, <laughs> like he kind of misuses his superpowers a little bit. But we made him like a superhero that comes in and, and um, you know, threatens you if you don't get vaccinated and stuff. And uh, there, there it is, uh, the super vaccine vato. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny and irreverent. And uh, uh, we had a great time uh, doing these. There's Theo Rigo, that, that Theo that we all have that's like kind of a stubborn right-wing jerk you know like doesn't want to do anything uh and uh doesn't want to help other people and so finally super vaccine vato you know shows him uh the way right so uh then we went on to do uh stuff for this the california department of public health and doing like covid stuff uh reaching out to latinos and to youth uh and uh, from there we went to the we, we did the drought, man. We we're we're doing everything now, man. We're I think I'll do a PSA for world peace any any day, any day. <laughs> oh, that sounds like you're no, man. I I I I think those actually like the I, I think like you said, as opposed to the common way of doing PSAs, which is just so basic and lame, and just sort of speak to a very just lame really way of getting people to try to act on something that you brought the comedy that you brought the realness that you brought like you know that to it uh was something that was incredibly powerful and i think honestly i think that really out of the stuff that was coming out i think that obviously helped a lot you know so you know oh cool well thank you man i mean from my perspective and who am i um we have mario lucero in the in the in the back we're gonna bring him on mario in a little bit i see that you joined us right now we'll get you on in a second we're talking live with Mello achikana lili follow her on instagram to see all her great work she is a beast. i saw one of her paintings yesterday that i want to buy but she gave me a high price i think she's just trying to play hardball with me i want it for the background idea uh, for the crowdsourcing studio. just we're going to crowdsource it we're going to crowdsource it uh <laughs> elandi uh you know who's i don't know andy i don't know i don't you must you're like the la godfather because you have all these connections you know all these people you know you know we got to do a move we got to do a doc about andy that's kind of my next project figure out uh, you know we need an origin story for andy to see where he came from how it happened gotta make something up then <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the truth the, the the stories have been changed to protect the innocent um i want to ask you one more question um lalo and you can see lalo alcaraz um this saturday in san diego at amc mission valley at the san diego latino film festival um we're going to be talking we're going to be you're going to have i'm assuming you're going to bring some art you're going to bring some calendars oh i'm going to bring a little bit of art yeah a little bit of art a little bit of calendars gonna, a little bit of cucarachas i'm going to bring uh i have uh beautiful gallery quality prints that you should come and buy I encourage the the community to become art collectors i have limited edition prints of lots of new work i have uh, classic ones i have uh the the old posters i used to have like the 
you know, the, the laser print ones. I'm going to have all kinds of stuff to sell and sign for you. And I still have a few calendars left. It is March, but I'm still selling calendars, but I, I have less stocks left. So you, if you want to get one and, uh, and you didn't order one during the year, it, now's the time. Lalo calendar day is always a very important day on Twitter when people are trying right. to jump on top of each other <laughs> to, to get through. Uh, make sure that you guys are following Lalcaraz. Go to pocho.com, his website, where you can find all his daily comic books as well as find links to all his other work. He also has his show. Where, where can they listen to your show, Lalo? KPK.org. KPFK.org. Uh, Fridays, I almost forgot what time. Fridays at 3. Uh, and then the, the archive is there, you know, uh, it's, uh, they have 90 days of archives of, of all the shows, but our shows right there, um, yeah. this Friday, I think we're going to be live. Uh, and I have no idea what we're going to talk about other than politics and desmadre and hilarity. Hilarity will ensue. And if you want to call it a podcast, just don't do it in front of Lalo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can call me. Hint, you can call me Hente Show a podcast all we want. Just go anywhere you get a podcast and type in me Hente Show. Two Latinos and a microphone, and um, that's how we do it. So um, I want to ask you one other question before we, because I know you gotta get ready and stuff, uh, Lalo. But I do appreciate the time that you're giving us today. Um, can you speak a little bit about the changes? Because I mean, I remember, um, you know, uh, growing up, uh, I would always like. Like our thing was we would wrap presents in the Sunday comics, you know, like because we were too broke to get wrapping paper. So you just go get the newspaper <laughs> on Sunday and right. you know, you'd wrap the presents in Sunday comics. And I would go I would pick up I would read the, uh, you know, like, I grew up on the East Coast. So I would, you know, pick up like the Daily News and I would go sports section comics and then I would browse through some news or something like that. But. Um, the change from physical uh, paper, uh, periodicals, daily comic strips to now, you know, having to have your audience sort of go online to find you. Um, how was that transition for you? Was there like an in-between place between the two of them where you think the industry was suffering or how, how, how do you how do you could you speak a little bit about that transition? Sure. I, I think I adapted uh, pretty well uh, because I'm still. You know, I mean, I can't speak for the, the comic strip part because my syndicate keeps, you know, keeps me in the remaining papers I'm in. I'm in some pretty good first, but I used to be in, um, you know, uh, like 100 papers. And don't ask me how many I'm in right now. It doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm in, uh, I'm in enough papers uh, that, um, you know, I can still afford to do this. Uh, and, uh, and also, uh, you know, I'm, I'm up uh, 20 years of doing La Cucaracha. So usually a comic strip only uh, the average is like a year and it dies. Um, and so I kind of missed the golden age of, uh, comic strips, you know, and, and also I wasn't doing a, I, I went through a period when the newspapers started collapsing and papers started shrinking and comics pages started shrinking where I got dropped by, uh, I myself, uh, another um cartoonists our strips were dropped by a lot of papers N not exactly because of our content but i mean guess guess which strip goes first you know the brown the brown strip goes first right and you know it, they didn't like comic strips that generate hate mail <laughs> that's that's me uh, so, uh yeah i wasn't do i wasn't trying to do happy uh you know comics about being a taco or being a talking dog or whatever I was doing stuff about reality and you know it's, it's a hard uh, climb um, and but also at the same time I was doing editorial cartoons and those also those clients dropped off I'm still syndicated doing that still can survive on that and I just decided I'm just gonna send all this stuff out free also on on social media and that's how I kind of really reach my audience you know like the syndicators can only reach certain you know segments of people that read newspapers still uh and uh and can get you can go to gocomics.com slash la cucaracha or slash la lo alcaracha you can get my comic strip free sent to you every day uh and uh but uh i thought no you know what i gotta develop my 
online presence and just be and also draw comics like you know on the spot you know like for when i had the idea for the 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 oscars cartoon that you showed earlier i mean i it was like oh good i got a good idea and it's like two days before the three days for the oscars perfect timing and the thing goes viral online and then also the client can you know print it if they want to print it uh uh in their paper or website uh and uh and i i that that has helped me survive you know just uh stay relevant even though i'm crusty <laughs> crusty and tired and whiny and i want to i want to sleep uh next to your dog yeah yeah He's, can i ask a yeah. question here no andy because oh. <laughs> you don't have any dirt on me, so I don't do everything you say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Some up, man. I'll make some up. <laughs> no, I was just wondering um, for Lalo, who and how influenced you in your writing? Because you know, there's a lot of uh, comics that have been out there for a long time, but not with your bite. Well, thank you. Uh, well, uh, I when I was in college, even in high school, I remember. I think maybe uh, uh, I don't, I'm not sure, but when at least when I was in college, they used to run Doonesbury and Bloom County. If you remember those strips, uh, Doonesbury still around. Bloom County came back, and uh, but those are uh, two political comic strips that really like showed me that. I could do that, but make them all Chicanos and, and immigrants and Mexicans and Latinos and everything and have them, you know, a cast of thousands talking about their lives. And that was my, my simple concept for La Cucaracha. Um, and, uh, and also when I was a kid, I, I read the comic strip Gordo. Does anybody know that strip? Gordo. It used to run in the Union Tribune up until it, it ended, which was like 1985. And I used to read it when I was a kid and go like, whoa, this Mexican guy is, uh, he's a Chicano from Tucson, Gus Ariola. He, would, he, he was drawing about Mexico. And that would make me think like, A, why is this the only Mexican or Latino in the whole comics pages? And B, I think I could do this, you know? And I kind of subliminally, you know, realize like, oh, maybe I can be a, a cartoonist, you know, and, and survive doing that. So those are kind of the the, the three major influences uh, that, that really affected me. And all the all the comic books from Tijuana, you know, like uh, reading uh, reading Donald Duck in Spanish and, you know, like <laughs> that, that, and all the luchador comics and Caliman, all that stuff, man. I love all that stuff growing up. And uh, and then a lot of my magazines, which you would sneak a look at, you know, when you brought it home, uh, and uh, it's scandalous, you know, uh, and uh, but but all that stuff kind of was like my formula for really thinking I could do it. Oh, and then I would see cartoonists in the editorial pages, like say the Union Tribune, like used to be a guy called uh, named Steve Kelly, uh, who's kind of conservative and. Uh, who one day when I, I was like uh, in college at state, I was probably 21 years old maybe. And uh, I went to, I crashed the cartoonist convention in Point Loma uh, uh, or no, it was out, uh, out in, uh, and it was in the base somewhere. It's one of those tiki hotels or whatever, right? And I crashed the co convention and I went up to Steve Kelly and I told him, you're racist. <laughs> To his face okay, you draw racist stuff man you should stop you should not do that oh no how can i be racist blah, 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 blah. anyway he's steve kelly's not here and he's in uh, new orleans or something now but anyway uh and now we're members of the same editorial cartoonist group uh and uh, one time i went up to him like, hey you remember when i called you a racist <laughs> he's like oh i don't know i don't really remember that I'm like and then he goes I told you I can go on for days, right? Oh, no, you're good, you're good. You're and, then, good. <laughs> and then he tells me, how can you be racist? You know, I, uh, he's still on that, on that tip, right? Uh, how can I be racist? I go to Baja and donate money through my church 
to the poor kids in Baja. Oh, I... yeah, sure. Can I cuss on here? Can I? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's like whatever. You know, don't uh, he would draw the? Uh, he, he was famous for uh, um, um, uh, drawing a Mexican uh, American city councilman in a sarape and a sombrero, uh, and uh, and I can't remember the guy's name, U- Ubaldo or something. Anyway, it was ancient history back in the eighties, but I was like. Yeah, don't don't abuse your superpower of cartooning just to draw racist shit. You know? Use it for good, not evil. That's so correct. his answer was, "I can't be racist because I have a racist friend." That kind of stuff. Not gonna think. <laughs> I got a Mexican friend, so I can't be racist. I ate tacos yeah. yesterday. I can't be racist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my driver's a black guy. I can't be racist. Bro, uh, the same. Um, the, the one quick story too. Like there was this guy, and you met this guy. This guy sent me uh, a hate letter, but it wasn't a hate letter. He sent me uh, to my P.O. box. He sent is a, a older white guy. He sent me a 1970s porno magazine, right? A- as if made it look like I ordered it through eBay or some shit, right? And and, and he was because my P.O. box address looks like an apartment, right? Like it's not box in one five six. It's it's number one five six. And so he, I think he thought he was going to get me in trouble for um, ordering a porno mag. He sent me his crustiest old 1970s porno mag. And the guy that owns the, the P.O. box is like, yo, bro, are you going you gonna to use that? <laughs> Here you go, man. Because that guy is from the 1970s and he was crusty too, right? He was an old surfer dude. <laughs> but, but the point is the guy that was, I had offended you know, he was like writing me hate mail and, you know, whatever about the comic strip or whatever. He, uh, uh, he's from San Diego. He's one of those white guys. That's like a racist light up the border anti immigrant asshole, but he lives in Baja with his Mexican wife and his three Mexican kids. Right? And that's a type, right? That's like a type. I met dozens of these guys over the years, and then they found me, and they really hate, like, they hate what I do. Uh, but this guy went over and above, and uh, my buddy ended up with a nice classic uh, 1970s porno mag. Oh, man. So, right. yeah, I, I generate a little bit of hate. All right, guys, we are live here with Andy and Melody from Arte Latino. San Diego Latino Film Festival happening now till the 19th, AMC Mission Valley. And I'm going to say this because people ask me, are the movies all in Spanish? They are some in Spanish, some in English. All the Spanish movies will have subtitles. Don't be scared to read. Uh, And you can catch... There you go. Uh, There you go. Oh, whoa. Wait a minute. Who's that guy? <laughs> it's a little little guy I'm working on. <laughs> oh, man. Um, and you can catch Lalo Alcaraz. You can go to Pocho.com, his website, gocomics.com to catch him, De La Cucaracha. You can listen to him live on Fridays at 3 p.m. And you will be he will be selling merch, signing autographs, taking pictures with the fans on Saturday at the Lucha event. Make sure that if you are stopping by, I see you guys lurking there in the chat. Um, make sure that you like the video wherever you're watching it, whether it's on the San Diego Latino Facebook page, on the 2 a.m. Burrito page, or on the Mi Gente Facebook page. Share it with your friends so that they can see the VOD after we get done. And make sure that you come out to San Diego Latino Film Festival. Here's another comic that I was laughing at, the uh, the, the Space Force one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted to check out your tacos. Um, obviously, Lalo, as somebody who was in San Diego and LA, San Diego Mexican food clearly superior, right? You can, you can, you can, you can close, you can, you can, you can close that debate right now, can't you? You know, it's gotten better over the years. Let me just say that. It's <laughs> better. Oh, which one, LA or San Diego? San Diego's got. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Well, yeah, a little controversy. But you know what? I can't find a, a machaca burrito. Oh my god! Uh, in, in LA, that that can come close to uh, San Diego. Oh god! I want to go. I, I want to chuck a burrito right now after you. Said that. But I, so. I need to be convinced on the tacos, you know. Cause... Maybe tacos, but burritos, San Diego for sure. Maybe, maybe. maybe right. All right, and you can go to sdlatinofilm.com to catch the entire schedule. Closing night party 
Sonora Dinamita. Uh, I, myself, as a filmmaker, curated all the comedies. So if you're here on Friday, go catch the Ay Que Reírse Comedy Showcase. Uh, Friday at 6.45 p.m., a ton of great Latino comedy shorts. Please come out and watch. Uh, and then the closing night party, Lucha event, Sabrosa Latino Orchestra was opening night. Sonora Dinamita on closing night. Um, and we were we were live here with, with Melody Andy. I think my comic influences uh, growing up uh, was Condorito. Uh, yeah, because the, the old Condorito <laughs> magazines were like Con, my favorite. Condorito. The blop. The blop. 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 Every time. My dad used to always bring those to me. Uh, and obviously... And then obviously, uh, Farside, Calvin and Hobbes, et cetera, et cetera. Ooh, those were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those are the, the great so much. Um, so again, um, uh, Andy, Melody, I know you guys got to get back to work preparing all the art today. What's happening today and tomorrow before Saturday at Arte Latino? Um, we have live artists every single day. Um, if it rains, which uh, it's pretty wet outside, so we'll probably just bring it inside the, the festival hub. But we'll have live artists here. Um, yeah, and we have the art here as well. So people can come in and take pictures actually with the immersive mural that me and uh, Esmeralda Robles did. And yeah, there's it's, yeah. it's fun every single day. Live music every day. So on the Latino music, stage? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Halfway point, film. man. Get this FOMO feeling out of your gut and go to the festival, go watch a movie. <laughs> Support Latino art, support Latino culture, comics, the whole shebang and bang. Don't be a Mexican, be a Mexican, all that good <laughs> stuff. Don't be one of those people that 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 gets in the door and then closes it behind you. Support our culture, and and uh, and um, and Lalo again, man. Uh, an an honor to have you with me on the show. Um, thank you, thank you. I, I hope you had a good time, man, and uh, we'd Honor's love to invite mine. you on at a future date when you got something to promote. Just hit me up, and, and we well, love you know to have when you when I have something to say. When you have something to say, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> maybe next time have a shot or something so you're not shy. Uh, <laughs> a I'm shot of us up. Close up. You should close up, man. All right, man. So I appreciate all of you guys. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Melo. Thank you, Lalo. Thank you. See you guys on Saturday. Looking right. forward to seeing you, buddy. I mean, Thank drink. you. Yeah, absolutely. Bye -bye. We got you. We'll get you some of the free beers right. from the Film Hub. Of course. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. I'm going to take these guys off stage. Later, guys. Bye, Bye, Melo. All right. We've been live here with Melo, Andy, Lalo Alcaraz. How friggin' cool was that? Um, I'm live today here. My dog is sick, guys. Send love. Send positive energy. Uh, and before I let you guys go today, I'm going to have one more special guest here coming on. Um one of the movies that I curated for the festival, as you guys know, my job is to curate comedies um, for the move for for our festival in the Ike Reyusa Showcase. And um, my goal with that is to get a diverse group of movies, different cultures, different types of films, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, we're going to bring on one of the filmmakers from that movie, a movie that you are able to see one more time. I'm going to bring up the schedule real quick so we can figure it out. Uh, but let's see when they're playing again. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. We'll figure it out right now. So let me do a quick intro here for our filmmaker and watch our preview for the Ike Reyes Showcase. And we'll bring on Mario Lucero from... Los pacientes recurrentes.
Mario Lucero. Beogard. Beogard. ¿Cómo estás, amigo? ¿Me escuchas? Mario. ¿Estás ahí? Can't, can't leave. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear us? ¿Nos escuchas? No, I, I, can, I can't hear you. Okay. We'll, we'll, that was, we'll give you a minute. We'll give you a minute uh, to figure that out. Check. Mm. Uh, let me see. Let me send you a private check. Check uh, your saving. Let, let me refresh right, the link. Yeah, go ahead. Refresh that. We'll see if we can get you on. Let's vamp. Let's watch the trailer. All right, we're going to watch the trailer while you while you connect. All right, we're going to watch the trailer here for the movie while Mario can Los escuchas, Mario. No sé quién sea más objetivo. Yo que digo la verdad. ¿A ustedes que le dicen puras mentiras y la tienen con falsas ilusiones a la pobre escucha. Sí, paramos un momentito para hacer oración, como usted indicó. A ver, Mario, ¿nos escuchas? Can you hear us? We can hear you. A ver, uh, habla un poco de la película. Es you. So we're live, people. Sometimes this happens. Uh, ta, 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 ta. We'll vamp. We'll do it live. Ok, eh, sí, no, no puedo escuchar, pero les voy a platicar un poquito de la película. ¿Está bien en español o en inglés? ¿Qué, qué, qué es mejor? Como quieras, como quieras, whatever you want. ¿En, espa en español? No, en inglés, lo hacemos en inglés, lo hacemos en inglés. Eh, ok, well, thank you, Luis. Um, unfortunately, I, I cannot hear. Uh, I'm on the street right now, I'm in my car, but I'm here in San Diego. Uh, talking about los pacientes recurrentes. Thank you for the time. It's a, it's a dramedy, a road, a road movie dramedy about, a re, a, as you could see in the trailer, about um, a group of addicts in, re, in rehabilitation that uh, had to make uh, some, some eight-year-old girl dreams come true. She's dying of cancer and she only wants to get, go back to her home place, to her hometown. So these, uh, these people get involved into this kind of treatment for rehab and they have to take her to her hometown in Chiapas, that it's southeast in Mexico, and it's it seems to, that it's going to be a really dramatic story. But the thing is that we we just uh, well we just work it out to make it as a comedy. So it it'll fit perfect in a in a dramatic dramatic um, comedy uh, genre. Um, it's with uh, great uh, some great actors: Hernan Mendoza, Sofia Alexander Katz, uh, Mauro Sanchez Navarro. Uh, and this this whole, whole group of actors, I mean, they're just taking charge the story and they handle the story so very well and so very beautiful. 
that I'm sure you would like it very much. Um, this we had a we had a screening this last Sunday, and we're gonna have another screening this uh, next uh, Thursday at 7:20 p.m. And uh, well, and that, uh, we're just very very grateful uh, to to have to be here in San Diego and just to see you. I'm gonna be there in the digital cinema. It's gonna be on the digital cinema, and I'm gonna be there just to uh, just to be with you guys i mean uh, whoever wants to to see the show and if you have any questions or just to talk a, a bit about the film and just to hear your impressions uh, i'll be i'll be humble and i'll be glad to 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 listen to them absolutely uh if you can write the something something there there you go okay yeah the casting the casting it's uh it's a wonderful cast uh we had um as, as I said, uh, we had Hernan Mendoza that you might you might uh, know him for um, uh, Después de Lucia and his, the, all these wonderful films that he have done. Uh, he's he's a theater uh, actor. Uh, he started as a theater actor and now he's the, um, he's doing a lot of uh, TV shows and a lot of movies. Uh, also, Sophie Alexander Katz, she's a wonderful actress. Uh, she she's been around for like a long, long time. She's very young, but she's been around for a long time. Uh, uh, Mauro Sanchez Navarro, who plays this wonderful character that makes the comedy out of it, and uh, he's he's a junkie addict in the in the movie, and he just keeps getting getting all the people in trouble <laughs> around around the trip. And uh, he's he's a very very funny funny character. Uh, also, we have uh, Monica Miguel for probably those uh, that aren't that young. Probably they they remember Monica Miguel for TV shows, uh, telenovelas in Mexico and some films as well. And this was her 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 last movie. Monica has been doing uh, has has have done approximately uh, probably like seventy or eighty movies in Mexico plus a lot of telenovelas and this was we had the fortune to have her uh, in this film she, this was her very last movie and we pay a tribute to to her at the very at the, at the end credits of the of the film um we have Eligio melendez and we have this wonderful girl this eight-year-old girl uh paola who plays lupe who plays the the indigenous girl with uh, terminal cancer um, and she she was the only one who wasn't an actress. She was the only one um, that I cast her ha, cast her as a as a girl um, with no with no acting career. Uh, she uh, she was from the community that we the, where we filmed the 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 very end of the mo of the movie. So we actually she she was actually from there. And she plays a, a, a lot of a, a lot of a, a emotional emotional scenes in the, in the film. You watch the film, Luis, so you you must know that uh, she 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 did a wonderful wonderful uh, uh, piece in that in that uh, in that area. El Nionio. El Nionio. I want ah. to talk about Amareca <laughs> Vivas, who, play, who, played, el, who played El, who played el, el Nonio, Nonio in El Nonio, Ensayo. Yeah. <laughs> well, not, not, so, not such as, as Nonio right now, because he's actually very thin right now. Yeah. I know, very slim. And, uh, well, and he, he, we had the very, we have the fortune to have him. He's actually, everybody knows him as Nonio and El Señor Botija, El Señor Barriga, eh, and the Botija, and all these wonderful characters from Chespirito but uh, he actually he actually is a great actor he actually is a, it's a man that does a little bit of, of good uh, acting um, plays in the theater in Mexico he works a lot in Colombia in Brazil she actually speaks a very good Portuguese and what he plays here is uh, is that the the man who actually gathers uh, everyone and the man who actually plans this whole whole trip and uh, it's very interesting because he's the, in the in the movie he's the director of the of the clinic, and he has this idea, crazy idea, to gather all these dysfunctional group of people to to take to take this little girl uh, back to her hometown. So it's actually a very very crazy idea if you if you see it that way. Um, but 
let me tell you that this this kind of things actually uh, may happen. I uh, for for a research, I did a little bit of um, of uh, well, I did I did a little bit of research, and I actually stay in a in a, in a clinic for addictions. You know, in Oceanica, it's called Oceanica, and uh, I stayed there for like two weeks just to comprehend, to understand the whole treatment. And I, I just went there undercover as, a, as an alcoholic and I was a patient there and I just could live everything that, um, that uh, people with addictions live. And I, I understood that this kind of treatments actually happen uh, for a reason. It's, it's for the whole reason to, to make a service to anyone else. So at the time you put your, the life of someone else in your hands, you start making respons- you start making yourself responsible for that life and 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 this this is very very helpful in in the in the rehab process in the great rehab treatment so it might seem crazy just to, for this man the, the Edgar Vivar uh, place uh, to to send this all other all other people uh, with a little girl back to her hometown in a in a tiny van uh, but it's actually a thing that happened, and it's it only happens for a reason. And you you're gonna see it when you watch the movie, guys. Uh, what's what's the reason of, of for for all these people uh, to 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 go there? All right, I'm gonna ask you one more question, and then we're gonna let you go. Uh, después de te oír y hablamos. Very good. Uh, yeah, sure. Let let me the the whole the whole message of the of the film or or mostly what what i wanted to 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 do with the film was to talk about redemption redemption what it's the main theme as i told you uh luis on sunday that you 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 were wonderful there to 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 interview me but um uh the whole theme is redemption i mean i don't see all the characters at the very end they change they have they have a good change they they evolve or uh into someone else i don't want to tell them or to tell you that they become better or they become uh, uh you know nice nice persons or whatever but they change they 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 redeem uh, themselves for whatever they were uh, struggling during the story so that that was that was the main reason for them to to go on the on this trip okay thank you Okay, we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna let uh, the, we're gonna let you go, Mario. Vamos a hablar más tarde. Um, uh, te vemos, nos vemos el, nos vemos el jueves. Nos vemos el jueves. Thank you very Saludo. much. Thank you, Mario. I'll see you, I'll you. see you Thursday, guys. Thank you very much, Luis. Bye bye. All right. Thursday, Thursday, March 16th at 7.20 p.m. Thursday, March 16th, 7.20 p.m. Los Pacientes Recurrentes. We had a nice crowd for it when it played on Sunday. Uh, we had a good Q&A um, with Mario, and um, and um, it, was a, it was a blast to watch the movie. It was one of the movies that I selected for the Ike Reyes' showcase. As you know, anything that's Ike Reyes' is something that is comedy-themed. San Diego Latino Film Festival is a, you know, it's a border festival. We're in San Diego. It's Latinos. There's obviously going to be some stories about trauma, stories about immigration, stories about struggles. Um, there's documentaries that are very, very serious and very poignant. As I like to call them, very important movies. My kind of filmmaking is always a little goofier more adult themed humor so it is my pleasure to program movies that can be a counterbalance to the more serious fare and something that will allow us to laugh a little bit in a theater with our friends which is awesome and something that is very cathartic and helps us out a lot porque as the theme says hay que reírse so man big show today uh, Lalo Alcaraz, who is an icon, a uh, cartoonist, uh, go check him out, pocho.com. Pocho.com, you can catch all his comics. You can catch him live on Saturday at AMC uh, Mission Valley. I believe this starts at noon um, till 5 p.m. at the second art hub in Mission Valley. Um, go get some merch. There'll be tons of other artists. Uh, Andy and Melody will be there. 
and um, as, as well as other artists, I want to thank all the artists that have come on from Arte Latino to talk to me before and during the festival. Inocente from an Oscar winning movie, Paco Pablos from just everywhere um, blowing up, uh, Sony, who did the poster, Melody Chicanalili, who's who did the incredible awards. Go follow Mi Gente Show on Instagram at Mi Gente Show. Uh, you can catch some stories that I did about her live painting and about the awards that she's created for the festival, which are top notch, chef's kiss. Um, so I got to go take care of my dog, y'all. He's over here, Odine, on like, where's his also right there? You can say he's like, he's in a bad way right now. He hurt his paw. He hurt his, not his paw, he hurt, he, he hurt his leg. My little two year old shepherd. Um, so we're gonna have to try to get him to uh how to take him to the er at like five in the morning like a concerned dad because he was in pain and uh right now he's on he's all loopy on pain meds so send some positive energy for my boy also el osorio osiris the virus osito panda um and um i will not be at the festival today because i'll be taking care of my dog um, I will not be at the festival today because I'll be taking care of my dog, but I will be there Thursday and Friday, uh, Friday for the comedy showcase, Saturday for um, the Arte Lucha event, um, and uh, for the closing night party. So I appreciate everybody that stopped in. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Previn. Sorry if I destroy that for commenting. Thank you for all the lurkers. Um, Thank you, Lalo, again for for being on Mihente Show. It was an honor, and um, thank you um, to our filmmaker um, for stopping by. Uh, Mario Lucero uh, Beauregard um, came all the way here um, to watch the movie with an audience. The audience responded great on Sunday, and I hope that he has uh, another audience on Thursday at the Digital Gym in downtown San Diego. So if you have not been there, go ahead and go check out the new theater. If you are going to buy tickets, go to sdlatinofilm.com and get 15% off by using the code Show at checkout. I want to thank you guys all for stopping by today. I am Big Chief Burrito at Big Chief Burrito on Twitter or at Big Chief Burrito on Instagram. But you can all follow us and you can find all our links on 2amburrito.com at Mi Gente Show on Instagram and Twitter and on YouTube as well. And one last time, anywhere you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, iHeartRadio, Pandora, what have you, type in Mi Gente Show. You'll see this logo right up here. Hit the follow button. Hit the subscribe button. Listen to a couple of episodes. Give us a rating. It will all help out tremendously. Uh, elbow cough. Um, and um, it's going to help us out a lot. So I appreciate you guys for stopping by. Um, and uh, I'm a little out of it, but the show must go on. So we powered through this interview. We did it. Keep supporting the festival this week. Love you guys. Big Chief Burrito. Out. Vamos, papá, hay que irnos. Me estoy aguantando desde que pusieron el domo. Puedes esperar. Muchas personas trabajaron en esta película y solo quieren que te aprendas sus nombres de memoria. Y yo quiero asegurarme de que ningún animal resultó lesionado durante las imágenes de esta película. Yeah. ¡Listo! ¡Uy, palomitas en el suelo! ¡Chao! Espérame, espérame, parece que Maggie tiene algo que decir. ¡No, no, 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 de escuela de cinematografía para esto.